Mystery creates wonders, and wonder is the basis of man's desire to understand, by Neil Armstrong. One such wonder is understanding how Earth and the continents came to be. That's why for today's session, we are going to focus on the evidences of plate movements, which is covered by Quarter 1, Module 5. Good day everyone! What's up Einsinatics and welcome to a new episode. Quick instructions before we would start. Feel free to pause the video anytime to soak up the concepts. Pause the video when answering the assessments. You may use separate papers for your answers or better yet, you may download the module provided by the link on the video description. And most important of all, don't forget to smash the like button subscribe and hit the notification bell. What is our objective for today's session? After going through this module, you are expected to enumerate the lines of evidence that support the plate movement. Specifically, you will learn to investigate the pieces of evidence of the continental drift theory, demonstrate the evolution of the oceanic crust through seafloor spreading, and Realize the importance of the seafloor spreading process relative to the continental drift theory. And of course, we are going to specifically discuss on the continental drift, seafloor spreading, and the magnetic reversal as an evidence of plate movements. Let's start this session with lesson 1, which deals with evidence of plate movements specifically on continental drift theory. What is Continental Drift? Continental Drift is a theory proposed by Alfred Wegener who was a key figure in changing ideas about the Earth's surface. In 1912, he proposed that all the continents were once joined in a single supercontinent called Pangaea. Wegener suggested that Pangaea began to break up about 200 million years ago and the pieces drifted apart to form the present-day continents. At that time, unfortunately, Wegener's theory of continental drift was dismissed by geologists because he could not provide a convincing explanation for how the continents were able to move. Pangea, by the way, is a word which means all Earth. Here is a look on the theory of continental drift. This time, we are going to explore as to what evidences did Alfred Wegener propose in order for him to support the theory of continental drift. The first evidence for continental drift that Alfred Wegener proposed is the most obvious and that is continents fit together like puzzle pieces or also known as geological fit. As you can see here, much like a jigsaw piece, that South America and Africa have corresponding shapes. So as you can see here, if we are going to put the uh, pieces of different continents, as you can see, they can fit like jigsaw pieces. The next set of evidence that was used to support the theory for continental drift is that same fossils are found on different continents. So what are fossils? Fossils are remains of living things that lived long ago, such as the fossil of the Mesosaurus and the fossil of Glossopteris. As you can see here, the various fossils are found or located, or same fossils are found or located in different continents. Using now the remains or the fossil findings, much like a clue of a jigsaw piece, you can now determine which of the continents once existed next to each other. As you can see here, uh, shared fossils are located in several continents such as the Glossopteris fossil which is located in South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, and of course, Australia. Another strong evidence for 
the continental drift is that the location of the Mesosaurus fossil, which is a freshwater reptile, wherein in the present day it would not be able to travel a vast distance. So that means that South America and Africa are once joined together. The next set of evidence that supports continental drift theory is the rock evidence or using mountain ranges. As you can see, mountain ranges separated by vast distances of oceans share the same characteristics which goes to show that these mountain ranges once are next to each other. After mountain ranges, the next set of evidence for continental drift theory is what you call as glacial scars. So what are glacial scars? These are traces of glaciers found in many tropical regions of Earth. When continents drifted apart, these glaciers melted away, but however, it leaves track or scouring and polishing of rock surfaces. As you can see here, when the ice melted, it left imprints or scratches on the rock which goes to show that even though these continents now are located near the equator however it still has a traces of glaciers which goes to show that this one or these continents share the same locations the next set of evidence solves the mystery why tropical plants are located in Antarctica as well as coal deposits which has been located in temperate and polar regions wherein it is impossible since coal is formed in tropical regions. Climate evidence explains that continents are once joined together that is why tropical plant remains found in Antarctica as well as glacial deposits in Africa, South America, India, and Australia because this existed during the same time at the same locations. With all these evidences used to support the continental drift theory, unfortunately, the scientific community didn't accept the theory. Why do you think people believe or didn't believe in the continental drift? Here are the reasons. People couldn't imagine how the earth could be millions of years old. Another. Alfred Wegener was not able to propose a theory explaining as to what is the force great enough to move the continents. But by the 1960s, evidences would prove continental drift is true and the story continues as does all good science. That leads us to lesson number 2 which now supports the continental drift theory. This leads us now to lesson number two, the second evidence for plate movements and that is on seafloor spreading. When seafloor spreading was put forward, it paved the way for the acceptance of the continental drift theory. In the early 1960s, Princeton geologist Harry Hess proposed the hypothesis of seafloor spreading in which according to this theory basaltic magma from the mantle rises to create new ocean floor at mid ocean ranges so who is harry hess how did he came up with this theory actually harry hess was a geologist at the same time he is a navy submarine commander during world war ii and part of his mission had been to study the deepest parts of the ocean floor in search of a submarine. But instead, what he found out is this one, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. During World War II, in order for battleships to detect enemy submarines, they used an equipment called sonar. So sonar is an acronym for sound navigation and ranging so this uses sound waves to see in the water and is helpful for exploring and mapping the ocean because sound waves travel farther in the water than do radar and light waves the idea of continental drift circulated in scientific circles until world war ii and on this ship 
the USS Cape Johnson, Harry Hess made his discovery of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge which paved the way for the proposal of the theory. Much like the Continental Drift Theory, Harry Hess has to provide evidences for the seafloor spreading in order for his theory to be accepted. And one evidence that he put forward is the evidence from molten materials. Using now the uh, rock shaped like pillows or rock pillows shows that molten material has erupted again and again from cracks along the mid-ocean ridge and cold quickly. Another evidence that supports the seafloor spreading theory is the evidence gathered from drilling samples which indicates that if you are going to collect samples from the ocean ridge you could get younger rocks near the ridge and as you go farther the rocks gradually gets older. Another evidence that clearly supports seafloor spreading is from magnetic stripes. Rocks that make up the ocean floor lie in a pattern of magnetized stripes which hold a record of the reversals in the Earth's magnetic field and in this manner creates a symmetrical pattern of regular and reverse magnetic field lines at mid-ocean ridges which means that whatever is on one side is look duplicated on the other side which creates now the symmetrical pattern you might be wondering what is magnetic reversal it is also called as the magnetic flip it is simply the reverse of the polarity of the earth wherein the north pole is transformed into the south pole and of course the south pole is becomes the north pole this event happens because of the changing direction of the flow of materials in the Earth's liquid to the outer core. Here are the major concepts that you should always remember when dealing with seafloor spreading. The first one is that the ocean floor is like a conveyor belt and as it moves it carries the continents with it. And of course new ocean floor forms along the cracks in the mid-Atlantic ridge as molten materials erupt from the mantle spreading out and pushing all the rocks to the side of the crack and of course new ocean floor is continuously added by the process of seafloor spreading quick question since as we all know that the earth continuously produces new ocean floor is the earth getting wider and larger what do you think? Definitely, the correct answer is no. The earth is not getting wider and larger due to the process of subduction. What is subduction? It is a process by which the ocean floor sinks beneath a deep ocean trench and back into the mantle. And although the ocean ridge keeps on producing new seafloor, but once it meets another tectonic plates, it would now depend on the composition of the plates. If it meets a continental plate, the oceanic crust would subduct because it is made up of very hard rock or very old rock. Whereas the continental crust on the other hand is much more easily eroded and is the youngest. That is why it is only the oceanic crust being the densest would that would subduct between the two another quick question before we end up our session given that the earth has once had Pangea a supercontinent would there be a possibility in the future that the earth would be having another supercontinent what do you think Here is a quick look on how Pangea was formed to the present location of the continents right now. 
So using this one as a clue, what do you think would be the location of the new supercontinent and what would it look like? Using the patterns of movement from Banjaya to the present location of the continents of the world, if we are going to fast forward into the future 250 million years from now, the Earth's continents would once again join and would be called as Pangea Ultima. That's it for today's session. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or if you have suggestions to the contents, please make sure to write it on the comment below. Make sure to hit like and smash the subscribe button so you would be updated for the upcoming videos of Einstein TV.